Sales Navigator is probably the biggest cheat code in B2B sales, but you're likely using it like a rookie. Now it is not just a search tool. It is an absolute gold mine, but only if you know how to use it. In 2025, if you do not know how to build a top 1% lead list, your lead generation strategies will never work. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to turn LinkedIn Sales Navigator into a cash cow. The filters that matter, the hacks nobody's using, and how to spot leads that are ready to buy all of it. So if you're tired of wasting time and want to get your calendar filled with real prospects, let's get into it. Now, this first step is where most people go wrong. They fire up LinkedIn Sales Navigator, put in a lot of filters, and then end up with a very broad lead list. Feels productive, right? But then nothing, no replies, no meetings, and ultimately no revenue for the company. Because again, if your LinkedIn Sales Navigator is pulling the wrong lists, your entire outreach is doomed before you even hit send. Because a lead list is not valuable because it is big. A lead list is valuable because it has the right contacts in it. If your lead list is bloated with dead weight, you're wasting time on people who will never buy your product or service. So there's zero reason to do that. The way to solve this is actually mastering filters and your Boolean search filters inside of Sales Navigator. So there are five powerful ways to use Boolean searches inside of Sales Nav. You have quoted searches, you have not searches, or searches, and searches, and then parenthetical searches. Let's quickly go over each of them one by one. All right, so the first one is quoted searches. I'm gonna be sharing my screen on a Google Doc right now. For example, we're gonna use the marketing manager title. Right. If we were to go into LinkedIn Sales Navigator and go into leads, and then of course, when it comes to the current job title, we can go over this first and then we'll actually talk about the global keywords after. The most simple explanation is actually just showing you guys what this looks like. So if we were to type in marketing manager, go to include, there's a very broad set of these titles of these people who have this title. As you can see, a lot of them do look good at marketing manager, but sometimes you do get something like this where it is area district manager. And this guy has absolutely nothing to do with marketing manager. A market strategist, you get a project manager, a marketing coach, um, marketing manager at a manufacturing company, project manager. Again, these are very broad leads. This is not helpful to our ICP, right? So a very simple way to do that is actually, like I showed you guys in the doc, using a quotation query. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be setting up the same exact search, but instead of just putting marketing manager, you're going to put marketing manager in quotation marks. Here's what I mean. So as soon as we type this in, it's going to be a very dialed in list of leads compared to what we had prior. So again, basically every single person here is going to have the words marketing and then manager in that order right next to each other. Instead of somebody being, you know, marketing coach or social media manager, they're strictly going to be a marketing manager. For example, you can look at all of these right here, marketing manager, marketing marketing manager, marketing manager, senior marketing manager. Every single one of these leads are marketing managers, which is very useful. And that is how you use the quotation query. The second one is going to be the not query, the not searches. A very simple explanation for this is let's just say we have a B2B podcasting service and we target companies in the AI space, but they don't currently have a podcast. So a very easy way for me to do that is actually copying and pasting this directly. And again, your service, your product, your ICP is going to be completely different. But just for this example, here's what I'm going to do. As you can see at the very top, this is going to be search keywords. What this essentially means is we can find keywords that are anywhere on these leads LinkedIn profile. So if I were to do this, I want there to be the words or the word AI anywhere on their profile. And I don't want them to have podcast anywhere. Because again, if we're offering them a podcast, but they already have one, we're going to look very silly if we reach out to them. So this is a very easy way to do this. Let me actually take off this filter and then we can click go. What this essentially means, again, all these guys are going to have AI somewhere in their profile and they're not going to have podcast anywhere. Um, if we were to, if we want to get very granular as well and we say, hey, we don't want them to have the keywords SEO, we don't want them to have, um, you know, guests or whatever it is, whatever sort of keywords match your specific IDO client profile, or I guess don't match it, um, then put that in the not section right here. And here's a quick example of using this for the job title function. So we're going to go over here to current job title, a very simple way to set this up. And there's usually two ways to do this. First one is you can get very specific. And if you were just targeting founders, but again, inside of your lead list, let's say, for example, we were to type in founders, sometimes you're actually going to see leads that are, you know, assistant to the founder, intern to the founder, things like that. A very simple way to actually solve that is using something like this. So if it's founder or CEO, you're going to want to set up the same kind of parameters. Again, founder, not assistant, not intern. This is the easiest way to cut off people who have assistant or intern somewhere in their title. 
There is another way to do this as well. It's very simple. Just type in founder right here. And then inside of these little search bars right here, you're going to see exclude. This is a very simple way to do this. And this is another alternative. Again, there's two ways to do this. You can do whichever one you feel best. Now, the third one is using or searches. What this means, again, let's do a quick example inside of the job title section. Okay, inside of the job title section, let's say, for example, we were targeting guys in the RevOps space. We want them to have either RevOps or revenue operations somewhere in their title. A very easy way for us to do that is again, using our kind of a mixture of quotation marks and then using our or statement. So if we end up looking at this whole lead list, this is every single person who either has revenue operations or RevOps somewhere in their title. Again, match this to your ICP. See how you can use this if you're targeting you know, sales operations. If you're targeting titles in the sales operations space, you can use something very similar, sales operations or sales ops, You know, developer operations or developer ops. It doesn't have to just be operations, but that was just my example. Again, be very creative, but here's how you set up the or queries. And we're getting close to the end. So here is the second to last one. It is using your and queries. And this is very simple. Let's say we wanted to target somebody that inside of anywhere in their profile, they have the words B2B and sales, both of those things. If they have B2B and sales, again, they might be very, very qualified for what we have to sell them. So again, this is how you do that at the global searches. And you can use this same exact process when it comes to the current job titles. If you wanted to target somebody who has, you know, two kind of sets of keywords inside of their title, and that is mandatory for them to be marked as your ICP. Again, put that in the current job title section. Very simple to set up. Just use this exact formula. Now, this is a more complex Boolean search. So if you're not getting it on the first try, don't be alarmed. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just going to show you it. And if you ever have any questions, just come back to this video. I will time block it. I will mark the time where I talk about this and then just feel free to watch through the instructions again. So again, for our example, we're going to use this one right here. I'm just going to copy and paste this inside of the actual inside of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Once I've done this, what I'm essentially asking LinkedIn Sales Navigator is to find people who 100% have SaaS somewhere in their profile. I want them to either have freelance or consultant, right? So every single one of these 26,000 plus leads, they all have SaaS somewhere in their profile, but some of them might have consultant and some of them might have freelance. Feel free to be super creative with your ICP, but again, this is how you do the parenthetical search query. All right, so now your searches are dialed in. You're pulling in the right leads. You're checking LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Alerts are popping up, profile views, job changes, random updates. It feels like you're winning, right? But here's the trap. The best opportunities, you're still unfortunately missing them and you won't realize it until it's too late. Now, just doing this one thing that I'm about to tell you inside of your Sales Navigator settings is gonna turn random noise into cash in your pipeline. Your settings right now for LinkedIn Sales Navigator are probably on default mode. You're probably getting hundreds of notifications every single day. And I'm sure that your inbox is absolutely flooded with useless alerts and your lead list is a mess with irrelevant prospects. So instead of actually getting signals that matter, you're drowning in noise. So the easiest way to solve this problem and help you book more meetings is actually just setting up the right triggers. So what I would recommend is only keeping your profile views and your job changes. Those are the real buying signals. Now, the easiest way to fix your alerts is actually going into your settings, which I'm going to show you right now. So if we click into here, um, just go to your profile picture top right and then click into settings. Typically, you know, you can set it up for email and in product notifications. Now, this is exactly what I would not recommend. I would not set up all of these that are on and you're getting, you know, seven notifications, 10 notifications every single hour. I did this as an example and I've already gotten a bunch of useless alerts so far. So this is just a lot of people who share to post this. There's no sort of value here. So what I would recommend is turning every single one of these off. So I would only keep these two. Again, when a prospect views your profile and then when a prospect changes jobs. These are the real buying intent signals. Everything else here on this page is just noise. All right, so now that your alerts are clean, there's no more distractions and you're locked in on real buying signals. But here's the thing, your lead list is not keeping up with you. People switch jobs, companies shift, priorities change. And every single day, your lead list stays the same, so you're pitching to ghosts. You built your ICP lead list once, so why are you still doing all the work to keep it fresh? If your list is not updating in real time, you're wasting time on ghost leads who have either changed jobs, have an outdated email address or mobile, or were just never a fit 
in the first place. Sales Navigator can automatically update your lead lists in real time. You get new prospects every single week or every single day without lifting a finger. You'd be able to close a lot more deals if you used your saved searches to keep your lead list fresh. All right, so an easy way to do this is of course just letting Sales Navigator do the work for you. Once you've kind of built out your ICP, and let's say for example, let's just say you know, we wanna go after founders who are not you know, assistants or interns, and then we wanted them to be in North America, we wanted their employee size to be you know, around 11 to 200, and we want them to be in the SEO space and not in the advertising space. So now once we've built out this ICP, a very simple way to actually get notified of new leads is just hovering over and clicking this button right here. It is the most easiest thing you can do. It takes one click. And then again, as you can see right here, you're gonna receive weekly emails of new leads that do match this ICP. These are fresh and real-time leads. And then again, real-time leads equals real-time replies. Most reps think that getting the reply is all about the message, the offer, the list, everything, and yeah, those things definitely matter, but even when you get every single one of those right, your inbox can still be dead. Now, there is one super small thing that separates flooded inboxes from complete silence. Now, most people never even consider this, and that's why they fail. Cold outreach is not just about who you message, it's about when you message them. A lot of the times, your timing is going to be off because people aren't actually using LinkedIn. You're blasting messages to inactive prospects that have not even touched the platform this year. That's like trying to sell to an empty room. They're not ignoring you, they're just not there. But you'd actually get a lot more replies if you hovered over this filter inside of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It is the posted in the last 30 days filter to find people who are already active on the platform. What I would recommend to do, let's say for example, your total addressable market is 10,000 leads. And then you hover over the filter posted in the last 30 days and you only see 2,000 people. I would absolutely focus my efforts on those 2,000 people, especially if you wanna target them on LinkedIn, DMs, in mails, whatever it is. Focus on them on LinkedIn first and then focus on everybody else afterwards. So now you have the perfect lead list. Hyper-targeted searches, dialed in filters, ready to fire off emails and make a lot of money using LinkedIn Sales Navigator. But then bam, LinkedIn blocks you. Your leads, locked up. Can't email them, can't call them, can't export them from Sales Nav. And LinkedIn is laughing at you. You wanna know why? Because they want you to spend your precious dollars on emails that don't work. But don't worry, I'll show you a very simple fix. I use a tool called findemail.com and what it does is it, it bypasses LinkedIn's export limits and ends up finding valid emails and mobiles for all the contacts that you've just scraped from SalesNav. And of course, what this means, you do not need to waterfall. You don't need to use multiple providers to find invalid emails. Findemail does that all in one because there is a built-in catch-all verification. I've been using Findemail for almost three years now and I've never seen above a 5% bounce rate. So there's no more chasing dead contacts, just real deliverable leads. If your prospects are trapped inside of LinkedIn, they're not in your CRM, they're not in your email sequences, they're not really in your pipeline. They're just locked in jail in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And if you're not even in control of your own data, I don't really think you're in control of your sales. You need those leads in your CRM and your sequences in your pipeline ASAP. So step number one is go to findemail.com and set up an account. Step number two is download Findemail's Chrome extension. Very simple to set up. Step number three, I'm going to push us to LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So once you actually do put out your lead list, of course, this is what we built last time, you can actually see this button right here. As long as you have the Find Email Chrome extension, you've hit refresh in the Google browser, you're gonna see export to CSV right here. And then again, for this example right now, I'm only going to scrape 50 people because I wanna show you how to find direct mobiles of these leads as well as their emails. So let's just say, for example, we wanna scrape five leads. We're gonna put it into a new list. We'll just type this out as the test list. And then from there, once we are good to go, um, I would never click this, just, you know, just keep that blank and then click export to CSV. What I recommend next is going to your find email account and then clicking bulk from LinkedIn URLs. And then once you're at this section, it's very simple, just drag and drop your CSV into you know this little bar right here and then click start task. And just for compliance reasons, find email can only find mobiles for US based people. There's no Europe yet. That is exactly how you go from raw contacts into scraping 
all of your lead lists, finding valid emails, and then finding valid mobiles of all of these leads. And it's very simple from find email to actually push into your CRM, to your sequencer, to your pipeline, very simple stuff. Now Sales Navigator is not the problem. The way most people use it is. I always like to say the person behind the sales tool is always more important than the actual sales tool. Now Sales Navigator is packed with every single thing you need to book more meetings. You're just missing the moves that make it work. Finding email pulls clean, verified data directly from LinkedIn. So you can start booking calls now. Click the link below, get signed up, let's get you clients.